Hey everyone, today I want to talk about the legendary Snake Kingdom. Snakes? Why did it have to be snakes? Right off the bat, if you're calling yourself the Snake Kingdom, you're sort of signaling to your neighbors, don't push your luck with me. Or in the case of the Maya, you could just be implying a divine origin. The Snake Kingdom was one of the most powerful dynasties in the Maya world, embarking on a 300 year long crusade against their rival Tikal, in a series of events called the Maya Star Wars. Their influence can be seen all throughout the region, and yet, when we look at popular Maya iconography, the Snake Kingdom is barely mentioned. Despite playing such a prominent role in Maya history, the Snake Kingdom has remained an enigma. In fact, simply placing them on the map has been challenging. So today, we're investigating the mysterious Snake Kingdom and discovering why they've remained so elusive. Don't forget to hit that like button and let's take a look at the most powerful dynasty of the Maya world. When we last talked about the Maya, we learned about the grand city of El Mirador. El Mirador was the largest city in the pre-classic era, and it was the first video I ever did on this channel. If you'd like to check it out, I'll include a link in the description. I promise I've improved a lot since then. What made El Mirador so fascinating was the scale and grandeur of its buildings during a period where the Maya were thought to be more primitive. Its discovery, along with the finding of other incredible sites, completely changed our impressions of Maya culture during the pre-classic era. Real quick, I keep saying pre-classic. What's that even mean? Archaeologists love chronicling events into different periods. For the Maya, their history can be divided into three different eras. The pre-classic, which is where we see the earliest known Maya cities. The classic, which is where the Maya were thought to be at their height. And finally, the post-classic, which is the period following the abandonment of major cities that flourished during the classic period. Now, the timeline does get a bit more complicated when you start to break down those periods into smaller groups such as Terminal Classic, Early Post Classic, and Late Post Classic. So to keep things simple, I'm going to refer to events as either Classic or Pre-Classic. Now that that's out of the way, let's check in from where we last left off and see how things are going. Oh boy, I can't wait to see how the greatest city in the Maya Rose do- What the heck happened? See, this is why we can't have nice things. Okay, roll call. Who's still around? Oh wow, there's actually a lot of you. But how can we tell which ones were influential dynasties and which ones acted more like smaller vassal states? This can be a difficult task. I mean, it's not like the Maya went around branding stuff. Oh wait, they did? Talk about convenient. While the term branding isn't quite accurate, we do think different Maya groups can be recognized by what archaeologists call emblem glyphs. This one here belongs to Tikal, who, thanks to Teotihuacan, was one of the most powerful cities in the Maya world and we see their emblem glyphs all over the Paten. Other cities like Palenque also use this model, with their emblem glyphs also showing up in various neighboring cities. It's important to note that this isn't evidence of direct rule. The world of the Maya was made up of various kingdoms and political alliances, not centralized governments. Still, the finding of these emblems does imply that the larger Maya cities had a degree of influence over their surrounding neighbors. And while cities such as Palenque had a wide sphere of influence, it's clear that by this time, Tikal was running away with the score. But wait, what's that one? I like it, it looks like a snake. And snakes are cool, I wanna be like them. Where are they from? Somewhere in this general area, thanks. No, but seriously, I wanna be on Team Snake. What city are they from? To my surprise, until recently, we really didn't know the answer to this question. We certainly have plenty of contenders. References to a mysterious snake kingdom were found all over the area, including the names and achievements of some of its early rulers, but nothing that could tie them to a specific city. It wasn't until the 1980s that we finally found direct evidence that one of the snake kings ruled from the grand city of Kalak Mul, a city that had long been a strong contender. Now, if you're like me, you look at a city like Kalak Mul and say, hmm, big city? Largest pyramid in the area by volume? What took them so long? This city is literally littered with giant stela. Large stones the Maya would place in front of the buildings to document their history. They probably could have saved a lot of time if they just took a look at one of them. You know what? Let's do that. Taking a peek at one of these stelas should tell us why. Why is it blank? Wait, what's going on? All the stelas throughout the city are in really bad shape with their tags completely eroded away. I bet you're thinking, what did I expect? It's the jungle and it's old. Of course it's in bad shape. And you're right. The jungle environment definitely takes its toll. However, Kalak Bull had another environmental issue working against it. The natural limestone found in the area appears to be of a lesser quality, meaning the erosion of the stela found at Kalak Mul is far worse than what we see at other Maya sites. That's not to say we don't find any good stela at all. In fact, that one over there looks pretty good. So maybe we'll take a look at that one. It's gone. What do you mean it's gone? It's just gone. Welcome to the world of archaeology. Jeez. Well, luckily we have this photograph of it taken over 50 years ago. It was by studying these old photographs that archaeologists were able to tie one of the snake kings to the city of Kalak Mul. Then, in the 1980s, we finally found a stela that were legible enough to confirm Kalak Mul was home to the Snake Kingdom, a discovery that certainly wouldn't become more complicated as we move on. But for now, I know what you all want. It's an ancient culture, and they have a giant pyramid, so let's talk about the iconic jewel of the city, 
The building measures 120 meters square and stands over 45 meters tall. In terms of size, it's one of the largest in Mesoamerica and comparable to the second largest building at El Mirador, El Tigre. Man, I love these names. Great Fiery Jaguar, Paul? El Tigre? What do we call this one? Structure 2. Oh. What? It's nothing. You don't like it, huh? It's... Alright. Would it help if I said that this is how archaeologists name buildings when they don't have a proper name for it? A little. Well, regardless of its lackluster name, Structure 2 is an impressive building, and not just because of its scale. While excavating earlier construction phases of the building, it was shown that parts of the structure were built during the Preclassic Era. In fact, many of the buildings found at Kalak Mool actually date back to the Preclassic Era. Hey, what's that over there? This is one of the very few stela we have found that wasn't completely eroded away. As you can see, it's still very difficult to decipher. That's because you can't read Mayan. But thankfully, archaeologists were able to decipher it and determine it's a royal anniversary glyph celebrating a royal ascension. This was an exciting discovery because it gave us the opportunity to identify another snake king at Kalak Mool. So imagine my surprise when I learned that the stela doesn't show a snake king, but instead shows one of the early kings at Kalak Mool using the emblem of a bat. This brings up an interesting question. Were there two families ruling the city, or did the emblem of a bat transition to that of a snake over a long period of time? This is where it gets complicated. Remember when I said we found snake emblem glyphs all over the region? Well, a lot of those findings were references to earlier snake kings. These kings date back all the way to the Preclassic Era, and none of them are shown to be the rulers at Kalak Mool during this time period. Which can only mean one thing. Kalak Mool was not the ancestral home of the Snake Kingdom. Their dynasty had origins somewhere else. The question is, where? A good place to start is with all those references to earlier Snake Kings I mentioned earlier. Some of the best examples we found are these dynastic vases. These vases show a lineage of earlier Snake Kings starting with someone named Skyraiser. In total, we have found 11 of these vases, and the good news is most of them contain dates. The bad news is, the dates don't tell us very much. Why is that? Well, let me explain. Imagine if you found one of these doohickeys. This ancient device is called a palm pilot, and people used to use them to keep track of their schedules. Now, on this one it says, Friday from 1 to 2, grab lunch with napkin. So far so good, but we can't really say for sure when lunch actually took place. All we have is a general time frame. Now, imagine we found another one of these whatchamacallits, and it says, dinner with napkin tomorrow. You see how not only do the two timelines not line up, but the information is also too vague to determine a precise time frame. This is how these vessels are written. We are given years of dynastic rule, but nothing that anchors them to any point in time. One of these vases was found at the site of El Mirador, which has led some to believe that El Mirador was the ancestral home of the Snake Kingdom. I like this hypothesis. El Mirador is a big city, the Snake Kings are a great and long ruling dynasty, the Triadic Pyramid structure of Ladanta mirrors that of Structure 2 at Kalak Mool, and we recently found a snake emblem glyph on the site of one of the structures in the city. But unfortunately, all the evidence that points to El Mirador being the ancestral home of the Snake Kingdom is circumstantial. There's currently nothing definitive that can tie those early Snake Kings to the city. To find that, we need to head further north to the city of Zibanche. Like El Mirador, archaeologists have found snake emblem glyphs all throughout the site. However, two discoveries make Zibanche a much stronger candidate. The first discovery is actually an old enemy of mine, something that makes my legs tremble and my knees weak. Stairs. Luckily for us, these stairs are beautifully decorated with a Maya king being presented with Found captives. Lovely. Now, what's interesting about this mural is the name of the king. Remember Skyraiser? That's his name down at the bottom left there, meaning he's the king being depicted on the stairwell, which is an incredible find, but it's nothing compared to the other discovery that was made at Zibanche. We found a tomb, and not just any tomb, we found a tomb of one of the most pivotal snake kings to ever rule the Khan dynasty, Sky Witness. Now, if you're like me, you read that and thought, cool name, but who is he? Well, to understand his role, we have to talk about the war between Tikal and Kalak Mool. And as much as I would love to dive into this, that topic deserves its own video. But to sum it up, it was the largest war the Maya ever had, where the two superpowers of the day, Tikal and Kalak Mool, engaged in a series of Star Wars over the course of 300 years that forever changed the power structure of the Maya region. So what's that have to do with our friend Sky Witness? Well, he was instrumental in Tikal's defeat early in the war. He led an assault directly on the city that brought an end to Tikal's dynasty. Unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to bask in his victory, as Tikal fell the same year he died, and Tikal would come back again and then again before finally coming out victorious. But his temple is located in Zibanche, and while he's not one of those earlier kings, the presence of a snake king at Zibanche is a strong indication that it might be the ancestral home of the snake kingdom. And yet, we still have some problems. While Zibanche is a good candidate, there's nothing that ties those early rulers to the city. The stairway was likely built long after the fact, and Sky Witness would have served as ruler of the snake dynasty at the time when Kalvak Mool was thought to be the capital. So it's still a bit of a mystery, but thankfully we have a third candidate, 
to the north of Zibanche is another site called Ich Cabal. Ich Cabal has some interesting secrets to share. For starters, the size of its pyramids rival those found at El Mirador. The site is much more condensed than that of El Mirador, but its location and skill make it a really solid candidate. Unfortunately, I couldn't find much information on the site, aside from the fact that it's opening up to tourism soon. But archaeologists all seem very excited by the site, with some saying there is good evidence to suggest that each cabal is the best candidate for the ancestral home of the Snake Kingdom. There's still a lot of work to do at the site, and this certainly isn't the only evidence. In fact, I completely glossed over the fact that El Mirador is the only site directly connected to Kalak Mool through a large causeway, so we really can't say for certain. However, archaeologist Simon Martin proposes another hypothesis. The current model of using emblem glyphs to represent places of power might not be accurate. Instead, he suggests that these emblems were used by ruling families and not tied to a particular city. He gives some strong evidence of this, such as he calls emblem glyph being used at Dos Pilas, but my favorite bit of evidence he presents on this is another hieroglyphic stairwell we found at the Maya city of Naranjo. Now, this next part is going to look a bit like word salad, so bear with me. All we need to know is that none of this makes any sense. This stairwell reads, This is a conquest of Naranjo, and this king was defeated by a snake king, and it was done at Kalak Mool. Which, like I said, makes no sense. How does that even work? How do you attack Naranjo at Kalak Mool? Well, what if it's not saying at Kalak Mool, but rather a snake king who's from Kalak Mool? This would imply that there were other snake kings, and that the people who built this want us to know that it was specifically that snake king from Kalak Mool. As mentioned earlier, this is still a working hypothesis, but it does explain why we see variations of emblem glyphs throughout neighboring regions. However, one thing is certain. Kalak Mul had grown to be one of the most powerful Maya states, and its only rival, the Grand Sea of Tikal, was about to feel the full wrath of those serpents from the north. But unfortunately, we're out of time, so I guess we'll have to leave the story of Tikal's rise to power for another video. Until then, I want to thank you all for watching. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to bring snacks.